Be good too. Okay, what this video is is the tune up clean out procedure on the gas fired bow six heaters. What will happen is if the unit is turns on and then immediately misfires, if it runs for a few minutes, it misfires um, on these gas units, typically this is what we're finding. So we'll go ahead and remove this cover first. We have two screws up here next to the switch that need to be removed. And then we have two screws on a little access panel here that need to be removed. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Now we have already removed our supply line hose as well as our, of course, unplugged it from our electric supply. On the bottom, there's one screw in the center. We just loosen it because it is a slotted cover there. And we'll go ahead and remove all the rest of the screws here. Go on this side. And we have two on the top. All of these screws are interchangeable. Then the little screws that were here and on the side are also interchangeable with each other. We we'll lift it up a little bit, we we'll pull the cover off. Now the next step is we're going to go ahead and remove the gas system from the heater. Um, so what we'll do is we will pull the bottom screw out over here. Then we will <coughs> loosen the top one, but we'll still let that hold the weight of the regulator and solenoid. We'll go ahead and remove our two wires from the solenoid. Uh, these are interchangeable when you got to put them back together. Then we have two screws here that are holding the gas nozzle into the mixing chamber. So we'll go ahead, we've got one on the back side. We'll go ahead and remove it. We have one on the front. Now these are a four millimeter screw where the ones we'll remove later are a five millimeter, so those are not interchangeable. Once we remove those, we'll go ahead and we'll pull this top one the rest of the way out. Now we'll pull this, we'll rotate it, and lift it up out of there. Now we'll go ahead and we'll check our nozzle here, make sure everything is clean and clear. Uh, if that needs cleaned, you can clean it. We have an O-ring under here, make sure that stays in place and is in good condition. This one has two grooves, which means this is a propane unit. The natural gas unit's that smooth. So once we have that all cleaned up, we'll go ahead and set it to the side. Now from here, we're going to need to remove this from our combustion chamber, which is where our plugging up issue is. There's a diffuser in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove this. Now, to back up a minute, we can confirm that the unit is plugged up before we disassemble anything by pulling this hose, putting our finger over it, turn the unit on, and we're taking our high pressure switch out of the system. If the unit works fine with this hose plugged up with our thumb disconnected from here, that will indeed confirm that it's plugged up and we need to do this procedure. On here, the bottom screw is slotted, so we do not need to remove it. We simply loosen it, and we come up here and we remove the top one. Now, the, this screw is interchangeable with the two that we pulled from there. So, now we'll go ahead and pull these wires out of this clip. We'll come down to this clip, we will remove the fan wire. The fan wire will come over to the circuit board, it just pulls straight out the back. We remove that, we come over and we remove this hose from the mixing chamber. The only thing left is these four screws here, so we'll go ahead and remove those.
Now we have the mixing chamber and combustion pan away from the unit. We'll go ahead and look at these. Uh, if there's dust in there, which typically there will be, we'll take our compressed air. We'll go ahead and blow it. the mixing chamber. Now if we pay attention, this is set at the half. We'll go ahead and loosen that. We can slide this open. Now we can get in there. get all the dust out of that. Do not let anything hit that fan. It's a very lightweight aluminum. Anything touching it can actually tear up the veins. And then we'll have to replace the entire fan. So we'll go ahead and we'll set this back to where it was. We'll tighten this down, making sure everything lines up just like it was when we took it apart. We'll go ahead and we'll set this aside. Now this is our combustion chamber and this is our, our diffuser that will be plugged up. So, what we'll do is we'll take our shop back. We're going to go up inside here, and we're going to vacuum out everything that we possibly can dust-wise. There's a splitter in there, so we'll vacuum above it and below it. We'll turn the handle. We'll just get everything out of there that we possibly can. The way Japan would prefer we do this is actually to remove the front diffuser, remove the infrared disc from the front of it. Uh, we've got a lot of disassembly there and those screws typically do not come out very well after they've been through some heat cycles. The other option is at this point we remove these wires, we pull these nuts and we pull that whole assembly out. We have to remove the circuit board. Uh, I did that on one unit, had a couple of these break off because, again, from the heat cycles, a lot more trouble than I think it's worth. Now we'll take our compressed air, we'll come in here, and we'll get back up in there, and we'll just blow everything out of it. Uh, typically, we'll see the dust come out through the front of the unit when we do this. Go ahead and blow the dust out of everything there. We'll also want to get in. blow the dust out of our circulating fan there. Clean everything up. And once we have all of that cleaned out, we'll go ahead and we'll put it back together. So we'll start here. Make sure that that foam gasket's in good shape. Now I cut my screws separate. Because again, these over here will look the same, but they're a smaller screw and they just go right in there. So we'll go ahead and snug these. We'll install the two on the bottom. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little never seize or anti seize on those um, just to help in the future with the heat cycles that these go through. We'll take our wires, put these back in the clip. We'll take our fan wire. Now I always go ahead and plug it in on the circuit board before I put it back in the clip. Just be real careful, get everything lined up. That pushes on. And we'll go ahead and put the wire back in the clip. Now we will go ahead and we'll put this hose back on. You can use pliers on that clamp as well. Then we'll go ahead and we'll bring our gas system, our gas tube. Go ahead and put it in. Bring it over. Now again, I take and I'll start one screw there just to hold everything kind of loose gives me room to maneuver this 
Uh, at this point, we can also go ahead and put the cover back on our circuit board. Line that bottom slot up. We take the screw, drop it down through the top here, and get it started. You can do that before you put the gas line on. It might be a little easier. Tighten that one, tighten this one, and now we'll take our 4 millimeter screws that hold the gas pipe in, get that one started, come to the back side and get that one started, we can go ahead and snug it down. Snap this one down. And we'll go ahead and put the other screw in our mount here. Go ahead and tighten it down. <clears throat> and we'll take our two wires here, connect our solenoid back up. Now we have this set back at the half. Point. We have everything reconnected, everything tightened down. At this point, if you're capable of it, you can go ahead and hook your gas line back up, plug the unit in, and test it. Make sure that everything's working the way it should be. Then, what I am offering from Bow 6 of Ohio is we take our cover, we have a filter box assembly. So the filter box assembly includes everything you see here in galvanized you would take and drill four holes to pop rivet the unit onto the back of your cover now I go ahead and take silicone and seal around the edge put it on there then you'll cut out the entire cover that's underneath there uh, I use a plasma cutter obviously you could use a reciprocating saw cutting wheel on a grinder but we want to remove all of that. We want to maximize the surface area that we have for our filter to work. So we'll go ahead and assemble this cover. Line up the side on the bottom, slide it in, get up against the top here. Go ahead and you know, all these outside screws are the same. They're six millimeter. We'll get all of those put on, and then we'll put our access cover here, and then we'll go ahead and you can take electrical tape and seal up the rest of this hole here. You can do the same thing on the hole down here. And then our filter, the metal side goes in. Now we will filter and capture the majority of the dust that will go through there and hopefully with this system and with this sealed up, we'll be good to uh, get a full season before we have to disassemble the entire heater. Uh, with this being a blue filter, you need to keep an eye on it and if you ever, when you notice that the dust builds up that you cannot see the blue very well, go ahead and pull it out, throw it away and replace it with another one because we do not want it to plug up, we do not want to create a negative atmosphere because then we could end up with some carbon monoxide coming off the unit. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, if you'd like to order a filter box from us, we're selling the filter box, just the kit, which is this piece, the frame. You get three filters with that frame for $125 for that. So you can contact us off our website or our phone number is 614-348. One five eight seven. Thank you.